we're going to begin looking at solutions. And we've talked already about solutions in the past, so we're going to go through some of this information rel relatively quickly as it is review. Uh, we've looked at aqueous solutions before when we were talking about balancing equations and types of reactions. So something that's aqueous is in water, and it is water that has dissolved particles in it. And so when we have an aqueous solution, we have two parts to this solution. We have the solvent, and that is what does the dissolving. Many times it's water, but it's not always, but water is a very universal solvent. We have the solute, and that's the particle that's being dissolved. So the solvent dissolves the solute. There's a lot of S words, so you have to listen very carefully when you're using these in class. So the solvent dissolves the solute. When we were in the first half of chemistry, we looked at homogeneous mixtures. Solutions were an example of that because the homogeneous mixture should look relatively even throughout. You shouldn't be able to see the individual particles. We know that if left to sit, the dissolved particles will not settle out of solution. And we also know that filtering is not going to separate the solute from the solvent. So filtering just with filter paper, uh, for instance, if you had salt water, you're not going to be able to get the salt and the water separated just from filtering it. So some things that dissolve easily in water. Uh, water will dissolve ionic compounds relatively easily, and they will also dissolve covalent molecules, but only the polar covalent molecules. That's really important. Remember, polar covalent means that it's unequal sharing, so you get a slightly positive side and a slightly negative side to your molecule. Nonpolar covalent molecules are not going to dissolve in water. They're not going to dissolve at all in water. Uh, but nonpolar will dissolve other nonpolar substances. Now, as far as the solution process goes, you need to remember that water is a polar covalent molecule itself. It is unequal sharing because you have your oxygen molecule and it's connected to hydrogen. And oxygen has a higher electronegativity, so it is going to be slightly negative, meaning that it holds the electrons more often and hydrogens are slightly positive, meaning that uh, the electrons are not found, them, uh, found around the hydrogen as often. So water is going to be attracted to other positive, negative, charged items. And so since ionic compounds have a plus and a minus charge, plus being your metal, the negative being the nonmetal, they're going to be attracted when they go into the water. They'll be attracted to this positive hydrogen or the negative uh, oxygen. Other polar covalent, which are also going to have slightly positive and negative charges, will also be attracted to the water. That's why water uh, will dissolve other ionic and polar covalent molecules. Uh, polar solvents, like your um, water, will dissolve ionic compounds and other polar covalent molecules, like I mentioned. Your nonpolar solvents are only going to dissolve non polar molecules. So this is a good example of like uh, being with like items. So polar, even though polar and ionic are different as far as nonmetals with, um, excuse me, nonmetals in a covalent molecule, but metal with nonmetal and ionic, we're looking at having a charge associated with them. So like dissolves like. Polar will dissolve ionic because they're similar in that they have positive negative uh, charges and they'll dissolve other polar substances because the plus minus. Nonpolar has no positive or negative, it's equal sharing, so the only thing they will dissolve is other nonpolars which have no positive or negative. Now when we're dissolving um, and making a solution, the composition of your solvent and your solute are going to determine if something's going to dissolve. So again, whether it's polar, ionic, nonpolar, that's going to determine if something's going to dissolve or not. And there are a few things that can help your dissolving process. Now this is only if they're going to dissolve. So these things aren't going to make it dissolve. If it's a polar with a nonpolar, you're not going to make it dissolve. But it kind of speeds up how quickly it will dissolve if it's going to. Things like stirring or agitation. So when you have a fresh solvent that's continually hitting the surface, so when you stir the water, you're having that water 
continually hitting the particles that you're trying to dissolve and so that will continually have the positives and the negatives you know trying to uh, touch and be connected so that they will attract each other and dissolve things like temperature if you increase the temperature what you're doing is you are speeding up the solvent particles let's take water for instance so we have kinetic energy particles are always moving but if we increase the temperature we increase how quickly they're moving so kind of like with the agitation the particles are going to hit the solute more often since they're moving faster and that's going to force them to dissolve quicker and then lastly particle size so if you were to take a sugar cube versus the little small granules of sugar calculate the surface area the things that are smaller are going to have a large uh, a larger surface area to volume ratio and so they are going to dissolve much quicker than the sugar cube which will um, it will take longer to dissolve because it has it has a uh, less surface area exposed so it takes longer to get all the way through that sugar cube solubility uh, when we're looking at solubility we're usually talking about a saturated solution so a saturated solution is going to contain the maximum amount of solute that will dissolve for that uh, temperature and pressure so we're assuming temperature and pressure are staying the same and um, a solution can only take so much solute it will only dissolve so much if you try to add more it will sink to the bottom it's not going to dissolve for instance if we take 25 degrees Celsius and we take 100 grams uh, of water you're only going to get it to dissolve 36.2 grams of salt it's not going to dissolve any more than that it can dissolve less than but to be saturated it's the maximum amount so if we went to 36.3 we're going to have a gram a, a 0.1 of a gram that won't dissolve so solubility is just the amount of a substance that we can dissolve in a certain amount of solvent whether that solvent be water or um, alcohol will be another solvent uh, sometimes that we see and again that's for a certain temperature and a certain pressure if we were to change the temperature change the pressure then the amount that can dissolve will also change this is usually expressed as grams like we have here grams of sodium chloride per a hundred grams of whatever solvent you're using an unsaturated solution kind of opposite it contains less solute so if it's unsaturated it can still take more and dissolve more and maybe you don't need it to but unsaturated contains less and then we have miscible which is when we mix liquids so sometimes we don't have a solid dissolving in a liquid there are times where you can have two liquids that dissolve in each other so miscible are two liquids that you're dissolving together um, and in this case they'll dissolve in all proportions so you could have a small amount or a large amount uh, but it they'll dissolve in each other regardless of the amounts you're putting together and then you have really cool science things that you can do like this uh, where you can take different liquids and because they do not dissolve in each other you can see the layers of the liquids and they won't dissolve in each other so sometimes that makes for kind of a cool little science trick or demonstration that's called immiscible when these are two liquids that are not soluble and you can do this with water and oil if you've ever you know fried hamburger and you have grease left over and you dump it in something it doesn't mix with the water it doesn't blend with the water uh, they stay separate so that's how you can get those different layers